Battlefield's another FPS franchise I like. There's a lot of FPS franchises I like, not just Call of Duty. I'm more of a person that enjoys a lot of FPS shooters. Lately, Battlefield has not been doing so well, especially with the recent installment of Battlefield, which is Battlefield 2042. A lot of people don't still like it. Actually, I haven't heard that many people talk about how good it is. I know it's in the recent final season, but I still haven't heard if anyone likes the game still or if even gave it a try yet. But right now, Battlefield is at an all-time lowest. There's two bad game releases with Battlefield 2042 and Battlefield 5. It has never been this low ever before. And I think too that it can't even compete with Call of Duty like it did back in the day. Not even major competition now as Call of Duty is too successful and Battlefield is still trying to recover. The last best Battlefield games were Battlefield 1, Battlefield 4, and Battlefield 3. The games have been practically released for a long time and nothing can even compete to them. Not even the modern Battlefield games at all. Now Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, and Battlefield 1 did have troubles but they didn't really major affect the game. Well not except for Battlefield 4, Battlefield 4 had a major turnover. But Battlefield 5 and 2042 still have a lot of problems, and some of them have not even been fixed at all. So for today's video, I explain how Battlefield 5 and 2042, what went wrong with them. Also to some snippets of Battlefield 3 and 4. Before I get into the explanation, I want to say something about my channel first. In my Black Ops 2 video, I started a sub goal. The sub goal was to hit 5k, so when I hit that mark, I'm going to do a Q&A stream, because it will be my first stream for this channel. Well, I think I want to hit it around towards the end of August, so practically in two months. I would prefer if I hit it earlier. Right now I'm sitting at 2k subscribers, so I would appreciate any new viewers or any returning viewers who subscribe right now, and to check out my other stuff too. But with that out of the way, let's go back into the video. Like I said earlier, I'm going to be talking about the problems that happened in Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. For Battlefield 3, it didn't have that much problems. But I like to think, but there were very minor like survey issues, but then these got fixed. Battlefield 3 was a real rounded game. I guess two issues they can take up with it is that people were complaining about the DLC prices or premium, but that was a small minority. Battlefield 3 did have an issue with was the online pass. I did mention this in the Dead Space video, but back in the day EA had an online pass that you needed to buy or download in order when you buy one of their games. For Mass Effect 3, Dead Space 2, and Battlefield 3. It was the only way to play online and multiplayer, which was really stupid because you had to pay for the game for it, which is 60 bucks, and then you gotta pay for Xbox Live Gold or PlayStation Network. And that too, you had to pay for the online pass, which was really stupid. But EA was kind of smart because they included an online pass with every copy. If you manage to lose this online pass, you get to buy it again. I forgot what were the prices for the online passes, but they were very small. So it wasn't that much a major thing, but it still did cause concern. Basically, this was the pre-days of microtransactions. But there weren't that major problems for Battlefield 3. Maybe the server issues was called as a drawing point for some players because, well, it took some time to fix the servers, but in the end, they got them done. But still, people were still a little bit worried for the next Battlefield game, which is Battlefield 4. And oh boy, Battlefield 4 had one of the worst launches in history. It's funny because not a lot of people mention this ever again because it was for six months that this terrible launch affected the game. You know how bad it was? It was bad as like cyberpunk level. I remember seeing some of these glitches because I played that launch and this was for the Xbox One. But it was all universal for all platforms. So these glitches were that when you start a multiplayer match, the sound would just go away forever throughout the whole match. You were not able to hear anything in the game at all. And it would just be an eternal loop too. And this was for all multiplayer matches. And then another thing, during launch, you could even play Conquest. Because I remember that yeah, I even tried to play Conquest that's not available and it wouldn't even work at all. So you had to play the smaller modes, which were Team Deathmatch or the small close quarter maps. The thing was, it was still a laggy mess and it was very unbalanced. It wasn't even playable at all. And also too, there were massive amounts of server issues too. Battlefield 4 was one of the worst launches in the Battlefield franchise and it really affected the player count too as many people just shut it off and not even go play Battlefield or went back to play Battlefield 3. I was one of these people because I went back on Xbox 360 just to play Battlefield 3. But there was a massive miracle. They fixed the game and Battlefield 4 is now considered to be one of the best Battlefield games ever. Basically Battlefield 4 redeemed itself. Still it's kind of weird that many people don't talk about the Battlefield 4 launch because it was one of the worst. I think it was on the same levels as Cyberpunk. Then again, Battlefield 4 did really heavily redeem itself too. So during these times, Battlefield was doing great. DICE was doing a really good job with it since it was their creation and they've been keeping up a hold of it. But after Battlefield 4, this is where things started a little bit trend down. Because back in 2014, EA got the rights to make Star Wars games. Well, there was going to be a new Battlefront game. So they gave it to DICE to make a new Battlefront game. Since basically, Star Wars Battlefront is just a reskin of Battlefield. So maybe we have that. So for a couple of years, DICE had to work on Battlefront, and the game released, and it was okay. How many people like it, and some people did. It was an okay Star Wars game. And so came the greatest Battlefield game ever, which was Battlefield 1. And that didn't have problems except for server issues. 
And then also too that DICE had to work on Battlefront 1 and on Battlefield 1 basically back to back. This seems like it didn't affect the development and Battlefield 1 was one of the greatest Battlefield games ever and sold to be one of the best ever too. But after Battlefield 1, they had to work on Battlefront 2. And let's just say this is when EA was starting to go downhill. So Battlefront 2 was very controversial when it launched. And it needed a lot of fixes too. But this is not a video about Battlefront 2, we're talking about Battlefield. And so the team was kind of split. Then they had to work on Battlefront 2 and Battlefield 5. As well, basically back to back, so they were exhausted basically. After Battlefront 2 released, well, we have Battlefield 5. Now we're going to start getting rid of the problems of when Battlefield started to go downhill. Because before Battlefield 5 was even released, it started to get controversy. And this was with the reveal trailer too. This controversy was kind of pointless and kind of dumb too at the same time. The main controversy was that they had a woman in Battlefield 5 and Battlefield 5 is a World War 2 game. And well, there wasn't any women that fought on combat. And this became a huge big thing. But not only that, this controversy also came up too that Battlefield 5 wasn't being historical as it was. As many compared Battlefield 1 to the Battlefield 5 reveal trailer that they're too drastically different. And I agree with this, that they were very drastically different, they have two very different tones. As for Battlefield 1, that took it more seriously and that was for World War 1. But it looks like for the Battlefield 5 trailer, it looks like they weren't going serious anymore. It's kind of weird because when the game finally released, it had a mixed tone. It was serious and it was goofy at the same time. It was like a mixture of both, which didn't make any sense. This is what Battlefield never done before. Did it a bad company, but that was for bad company. For Battlefield 5 was supposed to be serious since it was mainly about World War 2. And people were expecting it to be the same level as Battlefield 1 with the authenticity, the historical sense of the tone, but it really wasn't. It was really a mixture of both. The thing is, Battlefield has not always been historical. Because for Battlefield 1, it doesn't really show the combat for World War 1 really well. It does capture the tone of World War 1 really well too. And it's not accurate with the guns, tanks, or anything, or even the combat whatsoever too. But for that argument, that didn't really work for Battlefield 5. I think this controversy was a small minority group of people complaining about it. But during the environment, during the time when the game was released, it became a huge big thing. Battlefield has previously had female characters in combat situations, like with Battlefield 4 in the campaign, and with Battlefield 1 with the Russian DLC. The thing was, people didn't complain about that at all. But now people were complaining about it in Battlefield 5, which was really weird, so I think it was a small issue that became a huge thing that many game journalists put too much focus on it. Because one guy complained about it, and it became a huge big thing. I think for most players, they don't give a crap. They just want to play a great multiplayer game. So to me, in my opinion, I think this was a small issue that didn't really affect the game. The responses to it to some of the people complaining about it was not really good. Because the way how DICE responded was almost like they were insulting the player. But then again, I think this was a small issue too. In my opinion, I think this controversy didn't really affect Battlefield 5 sales. There was other factors to it. As Battlefield 5 radically changed a lot of things for the series. This change was that you could revive your own teammates now. As they changed the way how you die, because when you die, you get down for a little couple of seconds, you either call for help or you give up, and then you go to a different menu so you can respawn again. But during this time frame, a medic can revive you from a different team or your own squad mate can revive you, but a little bit slower. This sounded good on paper, but when the game released, it killed a lot of combat flow. It didn't feel natural at all, it felt too slow to be revived and well even being stuck in this menu at all. Basically when you die, you either give up or you literally ask for help and it takes some time for it to give up. And then you gotta wait to respawn. There's two different ways of yeah, you have to wait to respawn, but in my opinion, I think this killed the combat flow as it took too much time for it. And also too, changing how the vehicles work too. As they no longer have unlimited ammo and they have limited ammo now. And you have to go back to the spawn or little points around the map in order to resupply. They say they do this because they wanted to stop vehicle camping. But vehicle camping just became much worse. As most of the resupplies were always back at the enemy spawn. And well they could get to a vantage point and basically snipe around the whole map. And nobody can touch them at all too. So combat was basically drastically different in Battlefield 5. And it wasn't really a good thing too. As players complained about it but still some people still had fun with it. But that was a small thing because another big thing that affected Battlefield 5 was Battlefield 5 was going to be a live service game. So new stuff will be added in the coming months. But the thing was when Battlefield 5 released, it didn't have that much content at all. It was basically a half completed game and you need to pay 60 bucks to play it. And the stuff at release, well there weren't any cool items at all. But with some of the weapons and some of the maps and some of the characters too, it really didn't help that game as much. Because at the release of the game, it was just only one front that was focused on. The Western Front, basically Germany versus France and Britain. That was it. Nothing about the Italians, nothing about the Soviets, or nothing even about the Japanese. They even had the map that you fight against the Germans in Africa. Now Germany did fight in World War II in Africa, but with the African Corps. 
mainly Italy mostly focused on the African front more than Germany. Italy had a lot of colonial territories in Africa with Libya and Ethiopia. But with Battlefield 5, they really didn't focus on that. It was just basically Germany versus Britain and France. But later on, with a few maps added on, they did add the Italian faction. So in the beginning part of the game's release, it was very limited, even though World War II was basically a treasure trove of gameplay. Could have done a lot of it, it was basically a waiting gold mine. But I remember during this time there wasn't that many mainstream World War II games. The last one was Call of Duty World War II and that they really didn't do as well too. And that one followed the same issue as Battlefield 5. it didn't fully take the World War II setting to the fullest. Even though they had the technology there to make a full World War II game that focused on mainly every important front and even some of the smaller ones too. It seems like the executives didn't want to take that risk, so they let the developers take small counts of parts in the World War II. But this greatly affected the games altogether. Even too, well I forgot to mention this, it's a small thing. The war stories or the campaign in Battlefield 5 was very limited too. They weren't very good at all. Compared to Battlefield 1, these were basically a poor man's version of that. Well, the greatest war story mission was The Last Tiger, but that released over a couple months later with Season 1. But again, back to the life service thing, these seasons were just patchworks seasons and their content should have been included from the game from the start, but they weren't because due to the life service, which makes the development very lazy. And you can thank the executives for that. The executives are basically EA, as they practically did the same thing with Battlefront 2. And Battlefront 2 had that controversy with the loot boxes and that well that affected Battlefield 5's development too. And so Battlefield was going to have 6 major updates. Basically patch it up and try to make it a fully $60 game. In one of these updates, which became one of the most stupid decisions for Battlefield altogether, they added a battle royale, which was called Firestorm. Well, it wasn't really a good battle royale game, as basically battle royale doesn't even fit in Battlefield altogether, so it felt really weird to play the mode. And basically, it died in a couple of weeks and a couple of months. Not a lot of people play it, it didn't seem that interesting, and basically the battle royale market was being oversaturated. But the battle royale mode wasted a lot of resources for the development team, because they could have done it on other future updates instead of working on battle royale. But EA pushed for battle royale because they wanted the same pie as basically as Fortnite and PUBG during that time. But they failed spectacularly. And most of these content updates were not really good too, as not many people came back to play it. And I was one of those people too, I didn't come back and play it as after the 5th update. With the 6th update, I did come back and play it. But for me, I hardly played Battlefield 5. It was one of my least played Battlefield games altogether. I just went back to Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1. But what made me come back was the 6th update. Pacific update where they bring in the America and the Japanese. This was the best content drop altogether. Basically it had the identity now, it was really kind of being serious too at the same time. Before it didn't take itself seriously but now it was. A lot of people came back and they praised the new content update. It's basically said that Battlefield 5 was now finally fixed. And with the 6th content update it finally became a $60 game. It was worth to pay for this game for its price. But then came EA and their grubby little waves and they cancel support for Battlefield 5 as this was the last content update. It really sucks because Battlefield 5 was starting to make a comeback and EA just pulled the plug on it. After this, people were still complaining as they wanted another front that they didn't even get focused at all altogether. The Eastern Front, one of the most important fronts in World War II, didn't get focused at all or mentioned altogether. The thing was, the Soviet Front was one of the most important fronts in World War II. They were basically the reasons that led to the downfall of Germany. Battlefield 5, which was a World War II game, didn't even acknowledge it altogether. Well, you want to know why? EA gave a response to this. They already made a Russian DLC for Battlefield 1, so they weren't going to do it for Battlefield 5. Which has to be one of the most stupidest decisions ever. Just because they made a DLC for Battlefield 1 with Russia, because Russia joined in World War 1, that they weren't going to do it for Battlefield 5, which is World War 2, and Russia had a major part in that too. It's kind of insulting, but... One of the most stupid decisions ever because with the Soviet DLC for Battlefield 5, I think that really could have saved Battlefield 5 altogether. Just like with the Japanese and the Pacific Front. But they didn't even take the advantage of that and just cut support altogether. Now Battlefield 5 is one of the least sold Battlefields altogether, only sold 7.3 million units. And is considered to be a commercial failure. The CEO chalked it up that they didn't focus on Battle Royale as they made campaign instead of Battle Royale. And that they complained that there was a fierce competition market during that time. Which, those factors can be true too, but I think with the recent controversy Battlefront 2, I think that affected many players not to play Battlefield 5, as AEA was going to basically do the same thing again with that. And they weren't going to go with the whole ordeal again. And so for some time, Battlefield 5 was considered to be one of the worst Battlefield games during that time. Also, too, I forgot to mention, they cut off support for Firestorm, which basically didn't even survive that long. So that mode was a basic waste of money. Hopefully the next Battlefield game, which is going to be set in the future, but not too far and not too distant, was going to take place in 2042. And it was going to be a prequel to Battlefield 2142. 
But many people were skeptical because they thought they were going to go with the Call of Duty route, make it too futuristic and make it lame. But when the trailer came out, it was amazing. And so we're going to be talking about Battlefield 2042. Now the trailers for Battlefield 2042 were amazing. The reveal trailer, the gameplay trailer, and the portal trailer were one of the best things that were ever produced by Battlefield. They were basically nostalgia trips too. Well, they kind of respected the player too, as it brought back a lot of memories from Battlefield 3 and 4. But oh boy, I guess the marketing team had more ambitions with it than the actual team that worked on Battlefield 2042. But for that, I could blame EA for that. Because the trailers do not reflect the final product altogether. Many people saw issues with this in the beta. I as well too. Because basically now, they changed the whole gameplay altogether. In this one, there was operators now. Which are basically copying Call of Duty and the other hero shooters basically. As every operator has a different unique gadget to them. But the support roles were still there. But the thing was, everyone was unique now. No one was a grunt soldier anymore. But to me, I think that killed the whole Battlefield feel. Because in the previous Battlefield games, you were just basically a grunt soldier. So I think in my opinion, added a little realism and a lot of more synergy with playing other people. Because everyone was just basically the same, but different classes. Well, Battlefield 2042, some of the operators are weird. Like one of them is an old person, just basically a granny that's in a war. Which is really weird. And goofy at the same time because 2042 is not really serious it went on the goofy sense too to me i didn't care but a lot of people didn't like this because battlefield used to be super serious and now it was just turning goofy but another gameplay changes was that everyone could have every weapon now so basically the assault class can now use an lmg scout can use an assault rifle now and well same thing with the support and engineer now this seemed good on paper but really didn't execute really well because one person could just play one class now forever now someone can just play the medic now and forever keep killing themselves while using an lmg and basically kind of mess up the combat flow also too one of the big features that battlefield 2042 had was the massive increase of player count as now there's 128 players on the field now but the thing was with the increased player count in the matches it still felt empty these maps were way too large and there was hardly anything on them Compared to the old maps, it took a long time just to find someone. These maps are really huge, but probably to accommodate the new weather system as now there's tornadoes now that goes on the field. And so this really impacted the game a lot. Not in the good way too, because in the beginning, there was a ton of glitches that came with launch. And it took a long time just to fix the glitches. In some instances, I think it was worse as Battlefield 4, but I'm not sure. I didn't play it around this time as I wasn't interested after playing the beta. As it didn't really feel like a Battlefield game. It felt like a former show of like a corporate Battlefield game. It was trying to copy Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4, just trying to capture nostalgia, but very corporate-like. I think a lot of players see this too, because they either gave up on Battlefield 2042 and never played it ever again. Also, what doesn't help is that the lack of content when it launched. It was worse than Battlefield 5, as there was hardly any stuff, there was hardly any new guns and everything too, and that some of the stuff they promised from the trailer didn't really correlate well with the final game. The lack of content, they did the same thing as like Battlefield 5, where already did a live service for it. And this was around the time when people were already tired of live service games, as practically most of them were just half-assed games. Which these content updates should have been introduced in the main game when it was released for 70 bucks. Then again, the $70 price range doesn't really matter because this game is always on sale most of the time. Which is a bad sign because that means it didn't sell that well. They're trying to get as much as profit as they can. Still, I think Battlefield 2042 has by the sales is that it didn't sell that really much as it's considered a commercial failure. And EA blamed the pandemic because they didn't have as much as hands-on on the game. Which led to the terrible launch and the massive amount of glitches in the game during launch. As well, for the launch, it required a lot of several patches in order to fix most of the glitches. And this was really bad because Battlefield 2042 is one of the most worst Battlefield games ever. The coming months had one of the lowest player count ever. Many people just went back to Battlefield 5 or Battlefield 1. The player code kept dwindling as they didn't get the time to fix some of the glitches, but it started to rise back up when they fixed glitches. But still, it's not on the same level as the other Battlefields. And what was embarrassing for Battlefield is that they got overtaken by another game, Farming Simulator. A AAA game was beaten by an indie game, and it was a farming game, which is really funny. Another thing too is Battlefield 2042 had a Battle Royale, which is called Hazard Zone. And I don't think anyone played this mode. I don't even hear anyone talked about it even when it released or even still to this day. Looks like EA did the same thing too because with Season 1 apparently they cut off support for that mode. But with the upcoming seasons, not many people didn't come back to it as there weren't really big jumps into it. Now, I don't think I even heard that many people saying that Battlefield 5 is finally coming back as well. Basically, with the recent season that just released, Season 7 is going to be the last season and Battlefield 2042 is going to end support. 
for the next year, we're going to get the next Battlefield game. But many people don't like appreciate what Battlefield's going on right now. As many people are comparing it, it's trying too hard to copy Call of Duty. As well, Call of Duty is successful ever than before, thanks to Warzone and thanks to the reboot of Modern Warfare. People think that EA is trying to copy this, so they're trying to turn Battlefield into something that it's not. And even too, but I think they cancelled this project, but EA said that they're going to turn Battlefield into something similar to COD, where they're going to have many different studios working on the Battlefield game and try to release them practically yearly and turn it into many spin-offs. So this was an old article and I think it's not even real anymore as basically Battlefield 2042 didn't sell that well so they're not going to go with that plan. And many people are really against that, what they're doing with the style of Battlefield right now. So in other words, Battlefield 2042 was one of the worst performing Battlefields in history. It was back to back with Battlefield 5 so EA is definitely going to have to do a lot of work and a lot of catching up with the next Battlefield game. Because apparently the next Battlefield game is going to come out next year. And I have still have no clue why, but they're going to include a battle rail for that. I don't understand why battle rail doesn't even fit with Battlefield at all. For that, it's just a waste of money, and battle rail is not even as popular as it was once before. I mean, literally, the top dogs are literally Apex, Fortnite, and then Warzone. That's about it. Back in the day, there was a bunch of battle rails, but I think most of them are gone and have dwindling player counts. But hopefully, this next Battlefield game will be good. Hopefully. So they can take the advantage as many people are really upset with Call of Duty now. Possibly, Battlefield can make a massive comeback. Still, DICE is still a publisher from EA, and EA has been known to ruin a lot of stuff. They're still doing it today, and they still haven't learned their lesson. But hopefully the next Battlefield game might be good. But anyways, with Battlefield 5 and Battlefield 2042, they're one of the most weaker points in the Battlefield franchise. And they have greatly affected the whole franchise altogether, in a bad way. But with the next Battlefield game that's going to come out next year, hopefully this will turn to the good. The Battlefield will not be cancelled altogether because it makes too much money for EA. But if the next Battlefield game doesn't do as well, well, Battlefield might be in hiatus for a very long time. But like I keep saying, maybe the next Battlefield game will be good. So if you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and either comment. Hope you guys have a nice day. This is Mazer Argo, signing out.